when Tony Scott recently passed away, I read a retrospective of his work by a site that I like a lot called Playlist. And I was very surprised to see a movie I hadn't seen, Revenge, with Kevin Costner, Anthony Quinn, and Madeline Stowe, rated as one of his best. And I was still very, very doubtful when I approached the film recently. And it starts out like another Top Gun. You got Kevin Costner and his partner flying around doing tricks in a uh, airplane. And I thought this, you know, this is no different than any other 80s Tony Scott film. But suddenly the movie starts to get more interesting and more interesting. And it only gets better and better as it goes. I also caught the name Jim Harrison in the credits. And I said, I know that name. So I looked it up and he had written a, a movie called, a book, um, a novella, Legends of the Fall, and uh, which as many of you know, was made into a movie with Brad Pitt. And uh, I had read a couple of his books, not that one. And this is based on a novella in that same collection with Legends of the Fall. And I thought, okay, there, there's, there's more groundwork behind this movie that, that it could lend to some, some really good stuff. So I kept watching, and as I said, it just got better and better. I have no idea, well, let me, let, me, let me fix that. I do have an idea why this movie is so underrated. Um, it is really unlike anything else uh, that Scott produced. It's mean, it's brutal, not in the same uh, torture porn style that his later film Man on Fire would be done, but in a very pulpy sense, um, it's a very unforgiving film that doesn't play by the rules of Hollywood at all. Um, I won't ruin anything, but, but the steps that it goes along the way um, are, are, are very surprising. You find yourself asking, wow, a Hollywood film, is, is this sexual? Um, this uh, grotesque at times? Um, but in a way that really feels organic to the story. And uh, it's very touching. Kevin Costner's performance in it is, is one of his best, uh, up there with No Way Out and uh, Dances with Wolves. Uh, Anthony Quinn gives probably the best performance of, of his later career, and Madeline Stowe is, is perfect in, uh, as the lead. And uh, I really was blown away by this movie. It's, uh, it's such an emotional, pulpy crime story it's gripping and gritty and thrilling to the very end. And as I said, it was just refreshing to see how it went in these directions you wouldn't expect it to. It reminded me of um, a underrated film in Tony's brother's filmography, Ridley Scott, uh, Someone to Watch Over Me. And while watching it, I was thinking, it's really too bad that these two brothers didn't stick with more movies like this, more pulp crime films, so to speak because I think they really got lost in big budgets. They got lost in the spectacle, more so Ridley than Tony, but Tony too, he just got lost in, in these big action films. And uh, really, he was best um, when he had simplicity on his side. You can see the same thing in his thriller, Crimson Tide. Being stuck in that submarine allows him to really create some great tension. And uh, this film has a similar small feel. Um, and uh, one last thought is, you know, I read on the playlist, they said this is his lone Western. And it really is a, uh, a modern Western tale of justice. And uh, I would recommend that you give it a look or a second look if you saw it in the 80s or 90s originally and didn't appreciate it. Uh, watch it again. And uh, I think you'll find some surprises in there.